You're you could wake up one day and Instagram's gone, gone yeah. or it's down or mm-hmm. whatever. And all of a sudden, a business that you have have grown that was reliant solely on this platform is now in jeopardy. Right. And so at the end of the day, if you are a business on social media and you're primarily using a social media platform to communicate and to grow your um, audience, you have got to get people off of that platform and start building your email list. How are you liking your iconics? I really like it. Yeah. It's not necessarily like crazy, like gourmet type of thing, you right. know? So like they basically don't season anything. Oh, okay. So you can like, they have a bunch of their own seasonings that you can buy. I saw that. But then you can just do like, you know, like I just put hot sauce on it or whatever. Um, but it's actually great. Yeah. Because it's it's high quality. It's really good tasting food. Um, it has saved me. Like the amount of time yeah. that I've gotten back is obscene. Just because I don't have to always, like not having to just mentally think about cooking every single night. Right. Is. Game changer. Game changer. Yeah. Have so you tried well the home on the range one? I kind of put all my eggs in. One Which one was that? One. Was it the buffalo one? Yeah, I, think I didn't so. like that one. No, I really didn't like it. Oh no. Yeah, I wasn't a fan. About like three of those. Really? Yeah. yeah, I didn't like the Brussels sprouts, and I didn't like the. Oh man. Do you not like wasn't. Brussels sprouts in general? Or I like Brussels sprouts, but I like them really crispy. Me yeah. Too. I want like oh broiled gosh. Brussels sprouts. I don't either, and I was like, oh, I don't know if I'm gonna like this, but the bison or. Bison or yeah, it's yeah. bison, which I love bison, but it's for like some bison. reason, it's uh, is that recording? Mm-hmm. Okay, I don't know. For some reason, it's just not very good. Yeah. I pick up mine. I think I'm glad I'm you did it tomorrow or Thursday. Awesome. No, we can just think of it like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I need to do a reorder of mine because I'm out. Okay. My favorite ones are there's a chicken and sweet potato and. Mm, a chicken sweet potato and there's some vegetable i think it's okay. asparagus and then i made my own and i did sweet potato asparagus and brisket Ooh, those right now good. are my favorite yeah um so yeah okay well i'll have to see when i get mine in uh, what other ones did you get uh i got some sort of like keto like it was like a just a ball of like butter <laughs> avocado no. i don't remember what it was it was like a turkey patty or something like that italian turkey patty keto yeah something well it's it's range. it's great because what i like about it is that you know exactly what's in it yeah and it's even though it's super bland mm-hmm like I don't mind seasoning up and using hot sauce. I mean, right. I go through like a hot sauce bottle a week anyway, yeah. so like it's perfect. Um. So one thing I'd recommend is take the. It tells you like to pull the edges of the plastic up right. and then microwave it. Yeah. I just take the whole plastic thing off. Okay. Because I don't like the idea of like that plastic yeah, sitting on my food. With it. Yeah, yeah, I feel like that's just not good. So. Okay. Um. <laughs> But there's two, I was pissed because there's two that I got that looked great, but mm-hmm. they have corn syrup and wheat in them. Yeah. Which are the ones that are in there. Yeah, I made sure to check all of the ingredients because it says contains soy, contains wheat, yep. contains stuff. Yeah. So I think the ones that I got um, didn't have any of that. But it's great because... They just had dairy. Yeah, well, I spent like, I think my bill was like 100 It's like $103. Yeah. And I got like 10 meals or something like that. So I basically had like my lunch and then second lunch. <laughs> uh, and then in some cases dinner, like for the entire week, except for the weekends, which is gotcha. perfect because I don't mind cooking on the weekends. Yeah. Pretty nice. good. Got yeah. a lot of meal prepping going Sweet. on here. Yeah. Time, ch- time Yeah, sale. I like, yeah. Well, it's, I, I'm a big fan of the sheet pan meals, yeah. you know? Or you can just put everything in there. You can put your your sweet potatoes. You can put your uh, you know asparagus or Brussels sprouts, and then yeah. you have your maybe like a salmon or something, all on one sheet. 
You Those know? are hard for me though because everything cooks at different times. Yeah. So I mean, like, I'll start with the potatoes, but I'll have everything ready. I'll take it out, then I'll add it. But I mean, okay. it as far as like, as far as like dishes, yeah. as far as just cleaning the time it takes. Because I need I I need dishes done before I start eating. Yeah. I'm like that with cooking. Like dishes have to be. That's what I'm saying. Like I clean right. as I go when yeah. I cook instead of like. The worst thing is is when you're done eating and you're satisfied and you look over and there's just a pile of dishes I know. and yeah. dirty pans and you're like, oh, I don't want to do that. Yeah, yeah. I do the you same know. thing. So, uh, but as far as saving a bunch of time, yeah, um, I'm about to, and this is kind of hard for me, but I'm about to invest in this um, home gym product that I've been researching for a long time. Because I'm usually not a fan of those. Mm -hmm. But this guy... Is it a Bowflex? It's not a Bowflex. <laughs> it's not a Bowflex. It's called the X3 Bar. Okay. It was invented by this um, this this guy who's been on so many podcasts. And, I, and he also has a book out. Um, but it's it, he basically started this company called OsteoStrong. Okay. There's actually some locations around here as well. Mm -hmm. But um, he started this company. It's basically all about... It's these industrial side, industrial strength training bands, and it has like an actual bar oh. um, that you, that you attach to are you it. Looking this up? I think I've seen this. Is, does it have a screen on it, or do you are no. you responsible for? Okay, so it's not like a smart. It's not okay. a smart thing. I was I'm not a of fan of the smart. I think it's called either. tonal. I was thinking of the tonal. Yeah, that's what yeah. I, was yeah. I use it in a hotel tonal. one time. Oh really? Um, huh. But it is. It, it's kind of similar to tonal and stuff. It's because it's all about the. Um, like time under tension. Resist, yeah. Oh, resi okay. Yeah, exactly. Interval. Um, uh, yeah. Interesting. Okay. I'm, yeah. I'm looking. Okay, he keeps I'm a, this it. guy keeps appearing on my, yeah. This guy, yeah. He, he keeps it. appearing on like some of my favorite podcasts mm. and stuff. And it's like, well, you know, the research is there. Yeah. And he makes a really great point. And he's like, you can do 10 minutes a day for six days a week and you just have because it's like the bands mm -hmm. you just have to do one set of whatever you're doing because you're doing it at different ranges of motion like the more tired you get though you lower the range of motion so you're completely exhausted by the end of one set mm -hmm. and i'm just thinking about the time because i know that you mentioned it before the time to get ready for the gym then you yeah. go to the gym mm -hmm. then as far as me I do the sauna and I yeah. shower. Me too. It takes forever. It takes yeah. forever. And I'm like, there has to be a better way to do this. Although I do enjoy actually pushing weight and dumbbells. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I really want to try this out because I think it can really transform my entire mornings. And I'll have a lot more time to do other so things. So would this be in replace of your gym? This would be in replacement of the gym. Wow. Uh, yeah. So no so that's more why sauna. I'm kind of hesitant. <laughs> I, the no more sauna. I I mean, there's there's other places where you can uh, you can sauna. you know sauna. Yeah. <laughs> you need to buy one of those yeah. um, those the blankets. Chair, the chair saunas. Yeah, where you yeah. sit down and it yeah. looks yeah. like it looks like a sauna. like a moving blanket. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen the, that, zip and I've seen like the up. yeah, you zip yourself yeah. up. Yeah, just your head sticks out. There's um, yeah. I'm not a big home workout person. I will not do it if it's yeah. I it, I'm gonna see how this goes yeah. because I'm I'm kind of in the same boat. You know, it's kind of you get sweaty and yeah. You know, it'll um, be interesting. Yeah. Well, you have room to put it now. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. It's quite a this whole thing. I can already tell you uh, as far as moving in with someone, and it's gonna be the greatest growth opportunity. <laughs> I've ever had. And I mean that like in the best ways. Yeah. Cuz there's some, and you I'm I'm late to the game. You both have been doing this for a little while. Um but just the dynamic of going from being with your significant other in pre-planned times or on the weekends right. or like it's very it's kind of siphoned off in your daily life. Right, kind of like scheduled in a little bit. Yeah, yeah. and so now it's like you're going to see the <laughs> daily routines, you're going to see the the highs, you're going to see the lows, you're going to yeah. see all these different things. And um, 
it's just a great test for, and I, I was telling Brianna this earlier, there have already been moments where I've thought to myself, if I was a less self-aware person, if I was less conscious of this type of stuff, I totally can understand how one moment or one tiff can really build over time mm -hmm. into something really big. Mm -hmm. And this is why, you know, you have a dish in the sink and all of a sudden, you know, someone's like, I've had it, yeah. I'm done, you know? I was saying that I think like any type of serious relationship, it teaches you to be extremely empathetic because yeah. that dish in the sink that you would see, like a lot of people would go off and like, I can't believe he did this. I've told him a million times. But then the other side of it is he may have been running late. He may have just forgot sure. this one time, you know? Yeah. Well, that's, so, that's, I mean, because it's usually, it's never about the dish in the sink. Right, exactly. That's just the, the straw that broke the camel's back. It's, yeah. it's always something that has a, has a trail of, mm -hmm. of breadcrumbs. Yeah. Um, and so I'm, it, it's exciting to me. It's exciting to have that sort of mirror, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, uh, reflecting itself uh, mm -hmm. every day. And um, I'm just looking forward to seeing how this all plays out. I know. It's exciting. It'll it be is fun. Exciting. It's a lot of fun. You like uh, it, it is a constant like you have to die to yourself mm. because Mm. there it's so funny because this is very recent so like the last yeah. couple days um so in our new house this won't be an issue because there's like multiple doors and rooms between like bedroom and kitchen you know like uh, just yeah. like door door you know yeah. so there's a lot of room but right now we don't have that and so it's like bedroom kitchen mm. and i like to get up really early yeah. mm -hmm. and make coffee yeah. Oh, yeah. and turn lights on yeah and like I have a lot of things that I like Go to do in them. Yeah, that I have done every single day yeah. for, you know, over 10 to 12 years. Yeah. Right? And uh, so, but Tiffany's not that way. Yeah. So like she gets up not late, but like, I mean, later than five. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and that's just not her, her gig. And so like this past weekend, I was so frustrated <laughs> because like all I wanted to do was make noise. Like yeah. I wanted to wake up on a yeah. Saturday, day, early yeah. Saturday morning. I want to start reading. I wanted to start like doing all kinds of stuff. And instead I'm like tiptoeing tip -toeing <laughs> and like quietly doing things. And then I didn't want to make the coffee. So I was like, yeah. oh, just leave. Yeah. So it was like <laughs> five fifteen in the morning, and I yeah. just left and yeah. just like didn't come back till you know nine thirty. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, well that's no good. So then I'm like making all these concessions. I'm like, all right, well how about <laughs> how? I'm like, I guess I'll put my coffee maker like in our guest room. Mm. So then when I wake up, I can go in there, shut oh, that door, man. and then it's super quiet. So it's like you find yourself in these moments where it's like you want to be so self you don't realize how right. selfish you are yeah. yeah you're like because you can be yeah right. you're sitting there going well, okay. people inherently we're just selfish people well not why would you not be exactly. yeah but you you find yourself in these moments and the moments that you get so frustrated at it's like a mirror going i am ridiculous mm -hmm. yeah like mm -hmm. this is such a small little thing yeah like I can put the coffee maker in the yeah. guest room. Like the coffee yeah. maker is like an earthquake. Yeah. You guys know this coffee. That's the one I have. Oh, yeah. man. So imagine that yeah. going off at five o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And so yeah. I thought about it. I was like, okay, I like to go to bed early. If she was doing that at one thirty in the morning, right. yeah. I would have a huge, I'd be like, are you kidding me? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's a, it is an excellent yeah. exercise in learning about yourself yeah. and learning to, like you said, be more empathetic towards people and understand their situations more, but also to be very direct. Like when we first moved in together, it was like, listen, I like things very tidy. Yeah. Like I can't have stuff. Like yeah. I don't like clutter. Yeah. Like everything has a home. Yeah. Like I don't, you know, walk in the door and leave yeah. things from my car yeah. just right there. Like they all go to their places, yeah. even if yeah. it's on the other side of the house. I'm really bad about doing that with my shoes. I leave them all over the place and it mm. drives Hayden nuts. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know, yeah. You, you find out a lot about yourself. Right. But it's fun. Definitely. It's a blast. Definitely. Definitely. So, um, and I'm also already 
at seeing the benefits of, and this is just our unique situation, but the right. benefits of uh, having separate having spaces. separate quarters. Yeah, that would drive me. I'm sorry, because, that would drive me. Nuts. Yeah, I no, I it. know. It's a like I said, it's yeah. a completely unique situation. Yeah. but uh, it's really interesting. Yeah. So, what are you uh, at night? Are you like good night? Well, it, it, it <laughs> well, it basically. <laughs> Oh, man. It kind of, you, you, and again, we're like two nights in, basically. Yeah. But it's, uh, it really is dependent on the situation, how each of us are feeling. Yeah. It's like some, we all, we, we each have our different nightly routines, depending on what's going on tomorrow or whatever, whatever our day was like. Sometimes she'll go to bed super early. Um, or, you know, I'll go to bed at, at you know, when I see fit. Right. And, um, or if, you know, you have to do a lot of prep work for the next day, you can do that without disturbing the other person. That's a really good point. Kind of things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, it's just nice. And not that that's gonna, that's always the case. You know, like I said, we just have that option Yeah. to, you know, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to be up late. I need to work on some stuff so I can just be in my room and not yeah. be able to bother anyone. I can kind of get that. I can see that. Because when we get a house, I want my own office, and Hayden mm-hmm. already has an office. Yeah. So it's really the same that. thing. Yeah. It's it's a, instead of just like an office or a den or something, you're right. just using your, yeah. your bedrooms. And, yeah. and is it, there are definitely times when I'm like, gosh, I would love to be able to wake up early, make a lot of noise, yeah. read, like do all of my things yeah. without bothering her like because mm-hmm. right. I, I don't want to wake her up sure. so right. like yeah it would be nice when the alarm goes off not to make a big commotion to get mm-hmm. yeah. so i i get mm-hmm. it yeah. well and that's my problem too because i can sleep through anything i mm. sleep in a car on an airplane like i can fall asleep at the drop of a hat um so i'm the person who makes a lot of noise too and it's like i have to like step into his shoes and just like realize He's not like that, you know, like he yeah. can't start the washer machine, yep. you know, while he's sleeping. But here's the other thing. So like with us, uh, my solution for a moment was like, well, why don't you just wake up early? <laughs> and then I was like, immediately as it came oh, out of my man. mouth, I was like, wait a minute, don't do that because mm-hmm. that's my time. Right. Like, I don't want you mm-hmm. moving around the house at 515 mm-hmm. to 815. Like that's me. Yeah. yeah. That's my time that I get away from you. Yeah. That yeah. I get to do all the things that I need to fill my cup. So yeah. you know what I mean? It's like a totally. constant you're constantly figuring out like how am I supposed to fill because the reality is is that you can't just um like you can't just do everything together all the time. Like you have to fill your own cup. Have so your like you designated- have to space away yeah you have to figure out how to be an individual and grow yourself mm-hmm. there uh, one of our investors actually told me this he's this real southern guy and he was like you know what i'm you gotta have you know, marriage is three people you got you you got her and you got the marriage mm-hmm. and it's very true mm-hmm. right i've never heard that before yeah well it's like a relationship is a living entity basically hey yeah. we're doing a podcast talking about you actually kind of <laughs> and uh we all yeah, good t- things all good things i love you you need something <laughs> all right let me step out right yeah. okay go for it stand by yeah um but uh yeah a relationship is a living entity is how we look at it right and it's like Listen, you could have your problems and stuff you're going through. Mm -hmm. I could have my problems and stuff I'm going through. But this is basically like our baby. Right. And we don't take it out on the baby. Exactly. You know, you don't take out your frustrations on the baby. So you keep the baby healthy and you make it grow and everything. And so that's kind of, it's like, okay, that's why we have our separate spaces. If we need to just go through something or process something or just like be alone. Yeah. Sometimes you just want to be alone and you don't want to talk. And it doesn't Especially mean that you're angry at another too, person. Like just having that space to go away. Not that like, yeah, you know, you're always fighting. But I mean, fighting is inevitable in any type of relationship. Yeah. But even just having that space of like, I just need a second to breathe, collect my thoughts. Like that is so crucial, I think. Well, and I think too, like, especially if you cannot, especially if you're communicating and it does lead to like fighty tendencies. Mm-hmm. 
It's like, if I cannot fully see you right now, I need to step away yeah. until I can. Right. Because it's not fair to you or me or our baby, which is right. the relationship. Exactly. You know? Yeah. I've had to like really learn how to do that too. Of, you know, anything I say now is just going to make this fight even worse. Like I just need to step back collect my thoughts so that way we can both come together on the same page and i'm like you know what i completely understand what you're saying now and like yeah. i have a second to process it exactly yeah 99 yeah. percent of the time it's like you step back and you realize this is silly what am i right doing? exactly you know which living together will force you to do that yeah very yeah very promptly and abruptly yeah <laughs> i mean it's a thing like i look at these potential challenges is exciting you yeah. know like i it want is. it's so exciting yeah because i mean with every new challenge i don't use the p word um yeah. i or you know problems is what yeah. i'm talking about yeah it's a not a problem it's a challenge and challenges are are exciting and you can overcome them and once you overcome them you are much more mature and you grown from them especially whenever you overcome challenges together as a couple totally. i feel like there's nothing that brings you closer together than you know going through a challenge you know through your relationship or as a couple or anything like that and just coming out stronger on the other side yeah but and yeah i remember whenever i mean it's not really a challenge it kind of was but when hayden and i first moved in together the air was such a huge contingency like mm. He likes it ice cold, especially whenever he's getting ready. And yeah. I'm like, turn it up, especially when we leave for the day. I'm very kind of like OCD about make sure the air is turned up. Yeah. And so that was like something that we really had to get on the same yeah. page about was our air conditioning. Totally. All, this, all these things you think about, right, you know, it's exactly. like you're living with another person and right. like all the small things like the air quality or the... Which is so little, but like... The more that you two are in tuned with the other person's preferences, yeah. I feel it just builds that respect so totally. much more in the relationship. Yeah, wow. I agree. Um, you know, we were just going riffing on the fact that, like you said, the relationship is its own entity, and it's like it's like a baby. You don't you may have problems, I may have problems that I'm dealing with, but we don't take those problems out on the baby. Yeah, baby didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, <laughs> you know. True. So you always leave those aside when it comes to that, and uh, you know. And I think that's a recipe for for success in the long term. Yeah. So absolutely. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm excited for you. It's yeah. a lot of fun living together. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, man, what else is new, guys? Yeah, hired up podcast. Uh, episode who knows i know gosh um like so many now i know a lot of episodes uh but many many things going on at the moment new computers new people <laughs> new weather new stuff yeah. new weather uh assessing a new office yeah that's right so i forgot about that i think i've got Exciting. it out but i'm gonna keep that a secret yeah nice it's Exciting close. Times. Yeah. It's close. Okay. That's yeah, don't good. worry. Um, a huge. <laughs> that was my only request. <laughs> yeah. Goodbye. A huge update in our world that affects everything is these ongoing um, litigations with Apple. Yep. Oh, yeah. So it's not immediate. It's 90 days. So I sp misspoke. In 90 days, basically, now people will have, or developers have the ability to direct people to outside payment platforms. So like, for example, we'll either be able to build in this contact form inside of our app or um, we'll figure out a way to do it, but we don't have to take payment through Apple, which is a huge deal. Cause if you think about it, we kind of already figured out how to do without that. Um, but even if we were taking payment through the app store, um, we're getting charged between 15 and 30%. I mean, that's at scale. That is many new people. That's a lot. a lot of investment and development. That's, I mean, that's like, there's so many things that we can do with that money other than just throw it out the window to Apple. Yeah. 
Um, but it's very interesting. I mean, that's billions of dollars in revenue for them. And, but, exactly. but it's the way that it should be. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it, it, it should, it should be not taxed. I feel like for Apple to let go of something like that, something big had to happen. Money. Well, weren't they in like a lawsuit with Spotify for doing that or something? Well, it's, like that? it's so all these, they, they, they were, they were having stuff with Spotify separately and they were having stuff with Epic Games separately. And then someone else too, but uh, they all Facebook. started coming to get Facebook, yeah. And um, so it's a lot of money. Came and then, and then, as as it. as soon as one started getting traction, like the Epic Games, like all these other companies were like, ah, I want to add, I want to get in on this, you know. Yeah. And yeah. so, it's uh, it's hefty just going through these processes, the yeah. amount of money that's being spent. So. Maybe Apple's looking at the long term. Um, you know, maybe they're just going to cut their losses. Um, it's hard to say. No, good for us though. Regardless, it's great for us. Good yeah. for us. Good for all and these app service. companies, all these developers, all these companies that can now reinvest, or will soon be able to reinvest back into their company and help grow their company. Um, I think it's huge. Yeah. I agree. I'm very excited about it. I think it's a good thing. I mean, it's been kind of a long time coming. There's just no sense in in charging that amount of money. But they've always been able to just because they can. Yeah. Right. I mean, if if you could only sell cars through one website, yeah. that website would hold a hundred percent of the yeah. power of to do whatever they want. Yeah. So it makes good sense. And that's the I other thing too. Um, on that same note, social media. If you are on Instagram and that's your platform of choice, if you have all your followers on Instagram, that's how you communicate, that's how you offer your product or services, you have got to get people off from that platform because you, you could wake it. up one day and Instagram's gone, gone yeah. or it's down or, or whatever, and all of a sudden right. a business that you have, have grown – that was reliant solely on this platform is now in jeopardy. Right. And so at the end of the day, if you are a business on social media and you're primarily using a social media platform to communicate and to grow your um, audience, you have got to get people off of that platform and start building your email list. Yeah. Because email lists at the end of the day are probably the most valuable thing in that regard because they'll travel with you wherever whatever platform it's on you know yeah. something i've seen a lot of businesses do and it's not really new but i just feel like more and more businesses are jumping on board is the uh text subscription yeah have y'all seen mm -hmm. this of course yeah. yeah i've seen i feel like every business now yeah is and community like the blow up of community too mm -hmm. um which is and there's other services like this too, where it's um, it, more conversational text messaging yes, exactly. with companies and platforms. Right. Yeah. Instead of like 15% off with this offer code or right, whatever. Exactly. It's like, it's very not. Yeah. Which direct. would typically be through email and stuff, which is still great, but I've seen a lot of like really personal text messages mm -hmm. that almost feel like you're texting a real person. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty good. I mean, it's a, it's a good system. I think it'll become oversaturated. It'll become overdone. Yeah, people um, don't want to be receiving like text messages all day from yeah, random exactly. companies. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm part of Gary's community. Yeah, and maybe I look at like one every two weeks. Yeah. So how does that work with Gary's stuff? It's he just sends out text. Yeah, message he updates? just sends a text message. So he'll just say like, "Hey, have a happy Saturday." Okay. Or if he's trying to actually say something, he'll do like a, like you can record a video and then send a video as like a link. And so. So is that kind of the same way? Because I see a lot of artists do this. They're like, hey, text me at. Yes. Some yeah. Eight, That's what it is. And they oh, put their okay. phone number on. Yeah. It's not their phone number. That's what I've it is. I've never done that before. I'm like, I wonder, do you really talk to them? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, okay. I mean, like they'll it's get like your message. It's like push notifications for texts kind of. Yeah, you know, pretty like, much. I mean, and they'll get your text. Okay. But I mean, it's like getting so off. many of them. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. It's interesting. I think what it is is just, it's a, people are always constantly, influencers are always seeking how to get their engagement mm -hmm. because like, uh, 
open rates on yeah. um, emails used to be incredible, right? Yeah. And then that went away. And then it was on who's looking at your website or your Facebook or mm -hmm. who's opening your Instagram story. Mm -hmm. So now it's just kind of like, okay, people are bored. What's another way we can mm -hmm. make yeah. sure that they're looking at us? Mm -hmm. I don't know what the next step is. I, I would venture to guess that it'll be some sort of smart device notification. So like you'll be able to buy into um, whatever the new thing is, like if the glasses thing takes off or like your Alexa, yeah. like you can subscribe through that and then someone can send out a notification and it'll be like, Gary V has said to you, have a happy Saturday or something like that. Shut crazy. up, Alexa. <laughs> Stop listening. Stop listening to me. <laughs> yeah, did y'all see that Ray Bans partnered with Facebook? Yeah. To create those glasses, which is pretty much Google. Like Face what, frames. Yeah, Google Glass was doing that, right? And yeah, a time ago. They got and sued then... or something. Well, Amazon now has Amazon has glasses, huh. um, and you never see them. But you know where you see them is in the. Have you ever been to an Amazon store? Once. Okay, yeah. they're pretty cool. Yeah. It's really funny because it's just like a bunch of random items. There's like books, Legos, a spatula. <laughs> um, That's funny. But they have their own glasses, and they're actually completely normal looking. Mm -hmm. And I almost bought them, but there wasn't much to it. was basically just like they tell you the weather, they show you notifications like on your glasses. On your glasses. It's like I don't need I don't want to marry my outside world right. with this device. Like I need to be able to put that yeah. away. Good and luck. Not, That's where it's headed. Yeah. You know, Facebook bought bought Oculus a long time ago. Yeah. You know, and everyone at the time was Augmented like, reality. why did you buy why, that? Why did you buy that? That doesn't make any sense. That's not a vertical integration or whatever. Uh, Facebook is trying to become basically, in a lot of these big tech companies, it's trying to basically be like ready player one type of stuff. Yeah. Where it's like a complete universe on online. Everyone puts on their goggles and they can walk around and everyone sees each other's avatars and they mm -hmm. can talk with them. You're basically going to live in a Sims world. You can buy stuff. There's going to be stores that have their own yeah. digital yeah. marketplace. Have you ever done like proper VR? Yeah. Like the legit. Have yeah. you ever done that I'm, before? I mean, I've tr I've tried it out. Uh, not yeah. like I've not like the one that you buy at Best Buy right. and like yeah. stick up like a legit like gone to a place and done it. Yeah. It is wacky. Have you? What place did you go to? I, when I lived in Arizona, they had an act like a like a VR gaming yeah. Yeah. place. Arena, yeah, and I went there and like they set you up with yeah. the thing and they put the and it was the most bizarre experience. Like I I completely lost all sense of where I was. Exactly. Like I didn't after it was over. I really had to concentrate and think about like, what do I do now? Oh, I need to take these off. Like right. it was so, I was, I was really so there. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's Gosh, a, it was weird. a company called Dreamscape and I tried it in LA and they recently opened at North Park. I think they're open now. I'm not sure. I almost went to that. Really? Yeah. yeah. You put a backpack on, you have hand sensors, yeah. you have like a helmet on, like you're censored like head to toe and then you pick your experience. Yeah. So we did the wow. dinosaurs and so you go in, you pick your avatar too. And so you go in and you're basically transported to like Jurassic Park and wow. like a dinosaur comes down and like looks at you like one of the nice ones, <laughs> the <laughs> long necks, I forgot what they're called. Yeah. And it like sneezes at you and then water like comes and like splashes wow. your face. Yeah. It's Does it like, feel real? It feels so real. And then you're, you know, on a dinosaur's back and you're kind of going through and you're like up and down. And this is at North Park? Yeah. North Park, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right now? I have, yeah. I thought it was a movie theater. I'm like, what is this place? I walked yeah. in and it's like, it looks like a movie theater. And then, yeah. Wow. I might have but to it lasts this like tonight. what? <laughs> you what? I said I might have to go do this. Tonight. I think it lasts like it's super, it's like what, 15 minutes or something? Yeah, it's not too long. Um, yeah. But it's very immersive. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And like you're looking at yourself and you're blue. You know, and you're looking at the yeah. person and you're like feeling yourself. Am, like, I a, am I an avatar? Wow. <laughs> I know, right? I tried to do it because I used to, when I was a kid, I was very into flight sim. Mm -hmm. Oh. Loved it because I mean, like 
I don't obviously do it anymore because I just go do it for real. But like I used to love it. Like I build all these flight sims. And so I thought about it. I'm like, well, what if I built a flight sim and then I can do the VR? Because I've, I've re- you know, seen a lot of people do that. Mm-hmm. And then I started reading a lot about it. And like almost everybody that does that, it makes them sick every single time. Really? Because like when you're standing and you're walking and there's like, you know, dinosaurs and stuff, that's right. not a big deal. But like when you're like banking and rolling and flying through it, like your brain is convinced that you're moving, but your yeah. body's just standing still. So it's that's totally a... Like it completely messes you up. Yeah. Do you guys, you probably don't remember. So when I was 10, was I 10? When I was 10 years old, I went to Chicago. And that, so that was what, the 2000. There is this place called Disney Quest. It's not there anymore, but it's basically, it was basically an immersive VR Disney world. This is in the year 2000, so wow. you can imagine the technology. Yeah. Yeah. But like you could basically go in and uh, you could build your own roller coaster and it has like this pod, like this two-person pod that you get in. You build the roller coaster on the screen, you get into the pod, and then the pod will like move That's and it'll make you cool. go toward yeah, the roller coaster and you can put like flips and stuff in it. Huh. There's like all this crazy stuff that back then. Wow. I've never heard of that before. Yeah. Yeah, VR's come a long way. Yeah, I know. We went to the movies uh, this weekend, and there was kind of like a very similar thing, a VR thing. And you can see through the window this big black room where everyone is, you know, immersed in whatever thing that they're doing. And it's so funny to watch because people are like barely walking, you know, and they can't see anything. And then there's the workers, and they're like, throwing a ball into them or something like that i'm like it's kind of spooky fun but at the same time it's like if everyone were to be could you imagine in another reality we would look like dummies well it sounds like a movie like an opening frame an opening scene where everyone has these headphones suction cup to their face or, or not headphones the vr headset yeah and they're just all like zombies yeah, just walking around. Yeah, like one guy, he looked like he was in a shooting simulation. He was kind of like going around this and like ducking around this lady. And wow. then you have the workers who are in real life and they're like kind of playing a part and they're like throwing in a ball or like putting obstacles out there and stuff like that. What happens when our kids are like 60? I don't know. I'm scared to think about that. Imagine. It's going to be, well, there's two, I think there's t- ultimately two paths. I mean, I'd like to be somewhere in the middle, but there's like the full AI people who want to be Ready Player One, full immersive virtual reality, you know, everything's simulated. And then there's the other people who are like, you know what, society's not working anymore, I'm going to go live in the forest. Yeah. You know? Um, there, I, I would like there to be a happy medium because I see benefits in both. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, uh, you know, hopefully the technocracy... I'm not really about, you know, too much. I'm I'm about using technology to just optimize Enhance. us as humans mm-hmm. in the way that humans work and operate. Mm-hmm. I'm not about to like give my brain over to a chip to yeah. decide things for me. You know, chip brain, chip brain. Yeah, technology is wild. But that's yeah. why I like what we're doing at Hired Up, because I think we do <laughs> blend the two, Yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, we, 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 obviously, it's, a, it's an app. You know, we're using technology, but we're bringing the human element yep. back to the, to the job, yep. uh, you know, uh, process. Right, which is desperately needed. Yeah, and I reached out to that lady, too. Um, we'll see what she says. Uh, there's, a, there's a woman uh, reporter at the Wall Street Journal, Oh, good. That yeah. had uh, a really great article about just the effect of applicant tracking systems. Yeah. And she was interviewing people, and it's like there's a lot of people who are highly qualified for jobs that are just not getting past these tracking system algorithms. Yeah. yeah. For whatever reason. Is that the article that was on LinkedIn News? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, nice. Caroline got a call this, or was on a sales call this morning, and the person on the other end was like, oh, no, we don't need it. We just got a new applicant tracking system that automatically screens or, or uh, like, filters resumes. So we're, 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 you know, 
we've come up now with a whole plan to get around that objection, but it's right. like the perfect objection. They walk right into it. Right. Yeah. Exactly. It's like, well, how is that fair? So you're telling me that if someone misses criteria by 90 days, they get thrown in the garbage. Right. Yeah. Like, I promise you, you're not going to find those candidates. Your competitor is going to find them. Right. Exactly. Well, that's, that's the thing. Exactly. And there's more and more, I don't know if I, I sent you a couple of, of LinkedIn posts that yeah. really, but I mean, there's these people, there's these companies out there that are trying to utilize this special time in our society um, to do things like require someone to take a, a written test before their first interview, you know, things like this, going through five rounds of interviews, um, not, not, not being forthcoming about uh, your company and what you do and how much is the salary and all these things that are super important and uh they think they can they can just treat um their applicants like that or meanwhile um all their competitors are getting the highest quality right. applicants because they're not making the hiring process some kind of vanity competition right you know um so i think it's important that Transparency is just so important in this process. And um, you don't want to create barriers to that perfect fit. You want to decrease them. Yep. Simple as that. That's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So it's a huge problem. It's a huge, huge problem. And I don't, I mean, listen, it's kind of like health. Like, I don't think that people actually recognize, like, what it is that they're doing. Mm -hmm. Right? Because what would be the standard? The standard is get an applicant tracking system uh, that's built in with your HR software. Yeah. Um, screen candidates through resumes. I mean, no one's really saying like, hey, here are all the reasons why that doesn't work and here's the better solution. So I don't blame companies for going that route because what else right now are they going to turn to? Like what other option do they have, right? And so... Um, well, especially when it's like, the same thing that everyone else is doing so they think they got to do it too like we're going to miss out if we don't right. post on monster or whatever yeah. right I, I, I did i tell you i got a notification from monster that uh my account's being deleted because i'm like i i guarantee you i haven't used monster in like over 10 years i know monster makes me think of like it makes me think of the, the office 90s. Yeah. it's monster singular yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's That's right. monsters.com yeah uh but just a quick little thing here um really happy to have the sales team here yeah we've talked about it in a couple different uh, uh i know videos maybe but excited to have them here just hit i mean today you know tuesday thursdays they're in the office just hitting phones all day which is great um and so that's that's going to be very interesting and exciting to watch um, again, I still want to add between two to five salespeople every month, which is kind of crazy, right? Like that's nuts, it's but a lot of people. it's a lot of people, but we're going to do it. Um, there's, there's no reason that we can't do it. I mean, there's literally nothing that holds us back from doing that. Um, and, uh, oh, it's just so good. Mm -hmm. It's so exciting. It's going to be excellent. I mm -hmm. can't wait. I mean, think about all those people going out there, just hustling all day, every day. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, the deals that we have over here are insane. I know. Mm -hmm. Like the pe the meetings that we're getting. I mean, Carolyn got a meeting last week with every Whataburger in the United States. Mm -hmm. That is crazy. Eight hundred and twenty. That is crazy. So you know, I mean, there, we're, we're things are things are moving and happening, and and as we add more people, it just compounds and compounds. I mean, it, I should show you guys the the actual so like. You guys know how sectioned up my time is. Mm -hmm. um, like I, I have to do all these different buckets throughout the day. Um, one of them that's probably the biggest one is my time spent with our financials and with Jack. Figuring out and modeling and projecting like what will our sales and revenue look like per every single person. So it's a very complicated, very detailed. Very complex. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, and the numbers are just obscene. It's awesome. It's That's so, exciting. so great because at, at the minimum quota that I'm setting for salespeople, um, what we're going to be able to do from just an expansion perspective is really cool. Mm -hmm. 
Really cool. Yeah. So it's happening quickly. Yeah. yeah, and people people know about us out there. I mean, I told you guys yeah. in our meeting last week that a, a New York City, Manhattan-based PE firm with yeah. tens of billions of dollars under management was like, yeah. "Hey, let's jump on a call." Yeah. So we're in the we're on the radar for mm-hmm. those people, which is great. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we'll see what happens. I mean, all we do is we just build. Yeah. Same thing every day. We build. We create. We we expand and we figure out how to make more money. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we always yeah. said before that it's going to be this sort of, you know, you, 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 once you pass that certain point, it's just like exponential, right. mm-hmm. you know, but you have to be patient enough to get to that breaking point. Yep. You know, and most people and most companies are not, right. or they'll, they'll just pivot because something's yep. not working right away right. instead of having trusting the process and and being consistent yeah you know yep. so i think that's super important mm-hmm. we yeah to hit, hit our uh, our peak Shut oh yeah up. we're getting close to the yeah. moon. we're getting very very close <laughs> yeah we're getting close yeah. and how great are they i mean our yeah, new, yeah. the new oh, sales people i love them yeah. <laughs> they're great i know and by the way it's going to be like i have a prediction that the sales team is going to be like at least 85 to 90 percent women yeah. because yeah like girl that i'm interviewing uh either today or tomorrow a girl um it just it's gonna be it's it's yeah. great and they're all like just powerful like That's awesome we've got a great group of women at this company yeah yeah it's really neat we're quickly outgrowing our space yeah yeah which is good yep. which is good okay. great problems to have mm-hmm. absolutely yeah all right i gotta run Yep. I got training to do. Nice. All right. Thank you guys for another episode. Thank you. Very good stuff. We'll see you next week.